What do you think of my new recording setup? If this is the first video you're watching of me, well, my previous videos don't look as cool as this one, so you came in at just the right time. If you're using classes in Python, did you know you can increase your code's performance by about 20% by adding a single line of code to your class? I'm gonna show you how to do this. It also works for data classes. Before I dive in, I have something for you. It's a free guide that describes the seven steps I take whenever I design a new piece of software. You can get this at ariancodes.com slash design guide. If you enter your email address there, you get it right in your inbox. It's a PDF file, it's to the point, contains practical tips to help you make better design decisions. So ariancodes.com slash design guide, and I've also put the link in the description of this video. And here's my second recording setup. Yay! Okay. Back to classes. Classes in Python store the attribute values in a dict dunder object. The reason is that in Python, attributes are not declared in advance, but they're created dynamically. You normally do this in the init dunder method, the class initializer, though you can actually do it in any method you like at any time. And because of that, classes in Python maintain a dictionary of what the current attributes are. Using a dict dunder object can turn into a bottleneck. There's more information in a dictionary than just the key value pairs. And because they're dynamic, Python can't just allocate a static amount of memory at object creation to store all the attributes. So this leads to a lot of RAM usage if you create many objects. There's also another penalty you pay with a dictionary. Dictionaries in Python are implemented as a hash map. Now, even though this means that lookup is pretty fast, it's generally going to be order one, there's still hashing involved and access is going to be slower than reading from say a highly optimized array in memory. So what can we do about this? Before showing you how to make your classes way more performant, we first need to learn about descriptors because they play an important role here. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, give it a like. It helps the mighty YouTube algorithm to spread the word so others can find this content as well. And of course, it strokes my huge ego. So there's that as well. So what is a descriptor? In Python, a descriptor is an attribute value that has one of the methods in the descriptor protocol. Those methods are the get, set, and delete dunder methods. Any of those methods are defined for an attribute, it is said to be a descriptor. Now descriptors in Python are implemented in C, and they're really efficient. Hey, and here I am at yet another set. This is my coding setup. What do you think? You like it? You like the lights behind me? I think it looks pretty cool. Anyway, I have a very simple example here. It's a file that contains a person class. There's a main function that creates a person. Now, of course, if I run this code, what happens is not going to be very interesting because it does nothing, it doesn't print anything. But what I just want to show you is that if you look at the person object here, that it has loads of dunder methods. Well, that's how Python works, right? But in particular, you see that there is a dunder dict method. So if we print that, print person dot and then dunder dict, then it's going to print out the dictionary containing the attributes of the person. So when I run this, then you see it's going to print name, address, and email. And because attributes of a person are dynamic in Python, I can do something like this, person dot high equals well, and then let's print the dictionary again, right? Like so, and now if I run this code again, then there is suddenly an extra attribute in here. If you don't need to change the attributes dynamically, which honestly in most cases you shouldn't, then actually there is a better way, a faster way to define the attributes in a class, and that's by using slots. So here I have this same person class again. This is a slightly different example with a name, address, and email. But I also have a second class called person slots. And as you can see, the only difference here is that there is a slots dunder attribute here that has the list of values, the list of attributes. So what this does is that it tells Python that it shouldn't use a dictionary for attribute access, but it should use slots. And when the Python interpreter sees this, it's going to generate descriptors for each of these three attributes, and it's not going to put them in a dictionary. And this actually has a big impact on performance, because now person slots is actually about 20% faster, at least on the machine that I'm running this on, than the regular person class. So that's just adding a single line. Slots make the attributes static, which they probably already are in most of the code that you write. So this is like a really neat performance improvement 
that's really easy to add to your existing class. And what I did is I added a little test here. So we have a main function that creates a person and it also creates another person, but then of the slots variety. So other than that, it's exactly the same. Then I'm using the time it package to do some performance measurements. So I created a get set delete function that gets either a person or a person slots instance, or this union operator is available in more recent version of Python, by the way. I think this is there from Python 3.10. But the only thing that I do here is I do a set, I change the address of the person, I read the address and I delete an attribute from person. So just some basic operations you might want to do on a class, get, set, delete. And in my performance measurements, I do this get, set, delete on a person and I also do it on person slot and I repeat it lots of times and then I take the minimum of that and then I compare the comparison between no slots versus slots. And when I run this code, then this is what we get. So as you can see, there is here a performance improvement of over 20% just by using the slots dunder instance variable. So it's nice to have this mechanism where we define the instance variables once statically, so you can't change them afterwards anymore. But still, if you look at the class definition, there is a bit of duplication because we have to define them here in the slots instance variable, but we also have to provide them here as parameters. And we also store them here again as instance variables. So it's a bit cumbersome. If using data classes though, there is a shorter way of achieving this. So here I have the same example worked out, but using data classes instead. So I use the data class decorator and you can see that I added an argument here when I call the decorator, that's called slots. Here slots equals false and here slots equals true. The default value is false, by the way. If slots equals false, then data classes is going to generate a regular class for you where the attributes, name, address, email are stored in the donder dict object, just like any other class in Python. If you set slots to true though, it's going to generate the slots instance variable for you and then it's going to fix name, address, and email as the attributes of this particular class. And you get the same performance improvements. I'll show you what I mean. So I have here my experiment again. I have the person class, I have person slots. This is exactly the same, repeating the experiment from the previous version with the uh, normal classes. And now when I run this, we get a very similar performance improvement. And as you can see, this was the previous version. So data classes don't really introduce any overhead because what they do is generate the class for you and that class is going to be exactly the same as a regular Python class. So if you use data classes, it's actually very easy to use slots. You simply set slots to true and then you have the performance improvements without having to write the attribute names multiple times. So really neat. So you might wonder why doesn't Python use slots by default for everything instead of the dictionary? Well, there is a historic reason for that. And there's also a um, flexibility reason for that. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Historically, Python didn't support slot. That only was added somewhere along uh, version three of Python. And changing the default behavior of something really core, like how classes are set up is very dangerous because legacy code might depend on there being a dictionary of attributes. So uh, that might potentially break a lot of code of existing libraries. So it's not really easy to switch slots on by default everywhere. Another reason why slots are not on by default is because they have some limitations that we didn't talk about yet. And one in particular relates to using mix-ins and multiple inheritance. In principle, when you have multiple classes that each use slots, you can't use something like multiple inheritance to combine them. I have an example here. I have an employee slots class that has a department that uses slots to store the attributes. And I have a second class here. Let me delete the comments like so. That is a person employee. Person employee is both a person and an employee. This uses multiple inheritance. The issue is if I try to run this code now, there's going to be an error because Python doesn't know anymore which version of the slots object should be used. So that's a clear limitation of using slots that if you use slots and you want to use multiple inheritance, this is not going to work all the time. You can combine a slots class with a regular class. So if I delete slots here, like so, and now I run the code and uh, we won't get that error. So we just run the same experiment again. But if you have multiple classes with slots and you want to use them in a multiple inheritance configuration, then that's not going to work. Now, honestly, I don't think that's bad. I 
personally never use multiple inheritance in my design, in part because I feel like it complicates things. Generally, it doesn't simplify things. And multiple inheritance is not very language agnostic either because most object-oriented languages actually don't support it directly because there's lots of issues with it. In particular, mixins in Python, I really recommend against using that. I have a whole section about mixins in my course where I talk about this in depth. Overall, I really advise you to not use mixins because it potentially breaks a lot of things. Another obvious limitation to slots that I mentioned in the beginning is that you can't dynamically add attributes anymore. I also think that's a good thing. Uh, you should generally not do that. It's better to think carefully about the data structures you're going to need and fix them at the start instead of dynamically change them whenever you please because that leads to a lot of unpredictability in your code because you never know what attributes are going to be in the object that you pass around. If you really want to use slots and still dynamically add attributes, you can actually do that by adding a, an extra attribute to slots called dict, like so. And now when I run this code, so this is perfectly fine, but what I can do now is I can take my person slots instance and I can say something like person slots dot blah equals uh, what and now I can still run this without any issue whatsoever. If I remove this then there is no dictionary and this leads to a problem that was not defined as part of the slot variable. So you can kind of get still get the best of both worlds but honestly I really recommend that you simply Use slots whenever you can, because you're going to get that 20% performance improvement, which is great. But also fix those instance variable names at the start in your class to keep your code easier to read and easier to follow. And to make things really easy, I would highly recommend that you use data classes, because then it's just a question of setting slots to true when you create a data class. If you use the data class, then using slots is actually really easy and you don't have duplication of attributes. Now, in some cases, you might not need slots. You know, if you don't care about performance, then you can just ignore this. But if you read a lot of persons, let's say from a database, then using slots is actually pretty beneficial. And I believe that ORM libraries like SQL Alchemy actually rely on slots to make sure that they're performance enough. So this is actually being used out in the real world. So I hope you enjoyed this video about slots and what it can mean for you in terms of performance of your code. If you did, Give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you want to learn more about software design and development. Thanks for watching, take care, see you next week.